Before we start this video, it is important to note that these motherboards come in two different variations in terms of the RAM support. In this video, I'll be showing the DDR5 versions, but if you are looking to buy the DDR4 versions, you should know that all the information applies to both of them. So what are the differences? First of all, there is a very obvious difference in terms of the size, which can affect the decision you have to make for choosing a case for one of these motherboards. But if you have a big case that supports full ATX motherboards, here are all the differences that I was able to find that is important for you to know. So first, and probably the most important topic will be the performance. The Gigabyte B760DS3H comes with a little bit more phases in the VRMs. And the VRMs are the little parts that surround the uh, CPU socket and they are responsible for delivering electricity and voltage to your CPU. Basically, the more phases you have, the more stable and better voltage your CPU can get. Now, the difference is not that big. The B760DS3H comes with two extra phases, but I was able to find another crucial difference that the bigger motherboard comes with a little bit better cooling for the VRMs. Now, is it a big deal? Probably not, but if you are using some kind of a K version in terms of your CPU, those tend to draw a little bit more power. And because they draw a little bit more power, they also dissipate a little bit more heat. That's why in this case, if you have a K version CPU, I would probably get the B760 motherboard, the full ATX version, of course, if you have space for it in your case. But if you're using a non-K CPU, it is totally okay to take the B760 micro version. The network in these motherboards is pretty different. The micro version of this motherboard comes with a 2.5 gigabit LAN connector and the full ATX for some reason comes with only one gigabit LAN con connection. And if we are looking at the back I.O. of this motherboard, let's take a look at some more key differences. Because as you can see, the layout is pretty different in these motherboards. And if we take a look on the micro version, you can see that in terms of USB ports, it comes with two USB 2.0 ports and three USB 3.2 ports, which are Gen 1. You also have a Type-C connector, which is Gen 2 by 2, which is 20 gigabit per second. But the full ATX version has four USB 2.0s, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, which is slightly faster than the ones you get here. And the Type-C here is a Gen 2 Type-C, so that this one is only 10 gigabits per second. So overall, it is a bit of a mishmash, to be honest, between the connectors in these motherboards. With the full ATX version, you get more standard USB 2.0 uh, connectors, a slightly faster one USB 3.2 connector, and a pretty standard Type-C connector. But in the micro version, you get slightly faster USBs, uh, which is a plus. I don't understand why it comes only in the micro and not in the full ATX version, but it is what it is and it is important for you to know. Also, if you noticed, uh, there is a quite a difference in terms of the display outputs. Now, of course, if you are going to use a graphic card in your system, these ports are non-relevant. If you are using a graphic card in your system, you have no reason to worry about the display ports on the motherboard because once you connect a graphic card into your system, these ports usually don't work anyway and you should plug your monitor into your graphic card. If you're not using a graphic card and you want to use the display ports that in the motherboard, it is important for you to know that the micro version of this motherboard has a lot more display ports. You have one HDMI, one VGA and two display ports. On the other hand, on the full ATX version, you have only one HDMI and one DisplayPort. Now something that is important to note here, if you are using some kind of an F version of CPU, it could be an F or a KF, you won't have display in either of them. Meaning you will have to use a graphic card with those CPUs and the DisplayPorts and the motherboards won't work either way. 
Another thing that is very important for you to know is the type C support in these motherboards. In case if you have a case that has a front type C connector and a lot of modern cases these days have it, you will have to plug a special dedicated cable into your motherboard. Now not all motherboards have this connector and in our case the micro version doesn't have it. So if you want and if you have a case that has a front type C connector and you want to use it, you probably will have to use the full ATX version of this motherboard and not the micro one. Let's talk about RGB. The micro version of this motherboard has only two connectors for RGB. One of them is a 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector and the other one is a 12 volt 4 pin RGB connector which is a bit of an older standard but in this case you will have one of each. The full ATX version of this motherboard on the other hand has two ARGB connectors and two RGB connectors. You can find them in the top right corner of the motherboard and at the bottom of the motherboard. In the micro version you will find it only in the bottom. It can be a little bit inconvenient to plug components over there but you shouldn't worry too much about it. It's just important for you to know that the full version comes with two connectors of each and the micro one comes with only one of each kind. Let's talk about fans. Now both of these motherboards come with plenty of fan connectors and that's a very good and positive thing but I did manage to find a little bit more connectors in the full ATX version. So let's take a look on the micro version first and as you can see over here you will have your CPU fan connector right over here and you have three more system fan connectors to plug uh, all of the case fans and other fans that you want to plug. So you have one over here at the top, one over here at the side of the motherboard, one at the bottom. So in total of three system fans and one CPU fan in the micro version. The full version comes a little bit more equipped with uh, some additional connectors. So let's take a quick look over here. We'll have the CPU fan connector, which is pretty much a mandatory in every motherboard. But we can also see another connector which is called CPU Opt, which stands for optional. And this connector is usually used for, let's say if you have a dual tower style uh, CPU cooler fan, and those coolers usually comes with two fans on the cooler itself, and you need two plugs on your motherboard. Now, a lot of these coolers and the manufacturers who make them know that sometimes not each motherboard has a CPU optional connector, so they give you a splitter, which usually looks something a little bit like this. But let's say you have a water cooling solution instead, you will need to plug the pump. That's why this connector can also be used for connecting the pump of an AIO cooler. Now other than that you'll have the same free system fan connectors as you have in the micro version. So you can find one of them here. The other two will be here. At the bottom you can find another fan connector which is an AIO pump connector. And this can be also be used to plug uh, the pump of an AIO pump. Now all of these connectors apart from the CPU fan connector can be used for normal fans. If you want to connect any fan in your case, you can use in any of these ports. In case you have a single tower and you don't have any water cooling solution or any dual tower solution, you can use these connectors for normal fans as well. But if you want to use a dual tower cooler uh, that has two fans and you don't want to use the splitter, you can use these two connectors and if you want to use a pump, you can plug the pump over here. Uh, and it gives you a very nice variety and options to plug your fans uh, wherever you want, which is very nice to see. Let's talk a little bit about storage. And in this case, uh, there's no difference between the two motherboards. You'll have the same two M.2 connectors. They both support PCIe 4.0 uh, NVMe SSDs. 
one of the slots comes with a cover with some kind of a heatsink that you can put on your SSD and the other one comes without. They look a little bit, bit different, but they both serve the same purpose, so it doesn't really matter. And it, although look a little bit different, you should know that they are both the same and they have the same speed. Okay, so overall, for conclusion, what we learned about the differences between the two motherboards, the micro version comes with a 2.5 gigabit LAN connection, faster USB connectors, more display outputs if you're using the built-in graphics that you have in your CPU if you're using a non-F CPU, if you remember. And of course, it's more compact. It can fit in a lot more cases. Not all cases have space for full-size ATX motherboards. But if you do have space for a full-size ATX motherboard, then you will get the benefit of a slightly better motherboard in terms of performance uh, with more support for more fans uh, in your system and probably one of the most important features in my eyes is the front type c connector which a lot of cases have these days and if you go with the micro version you won't be able to plug your type c connector which is kind of a bummer and uh, you have more rgb which is great Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it helpful. Of course, if you have any question, feel free to comment down below. Let's talk RGB, because that's the most important thing in a motherboard, right? I got you. Let's talk, let's talk about RGB.